scope in Windows PowerShell is the concept of containerization. Certain things are created in a specific scope or container, and those things only exist as long as that scope or container exists. When the container or scope is destroyed or it goes away, so does everything that was created inside that container. Now, what is scoped? What things exist in a scope? Variables, PS drives, functions, and arrays. PowerShell starts with the global scope, which is the shell itself. This is the top level scope and is the parent to all other scopes. Within that scope, you might run a script, which generates a new scope for that script. That script scope is a child of the global scope. The script can run other scripts or contain functions, each of which have their own scopes. This creates a, a hierarchy of parent scopes and child scopes, and that hierarchy plays a major role in how PowerShell handles data such as variables. Normally, when you create new items, they're created in the current scope. So if you execute a command that like new alias or new PS drive or new variable, they all have a parameter that will allow you to specify a different scope in which to create the new thing, apart from the, the default, which is the current scope. When you try to read or access a variable, alias, PS drive, or PS snap-in, PowerShell looks for it in the current scope first. If it doesn't see it, it goes up to the scope's parent, then its parent, and so forth, up the tree until it reaches the global shell. This is why you can use aliases in your scripts. Although the aliases might not be defined in your script, PowerShell automatically searches up the scope tree until it reaches the global scope, which is where it finds all the built-in aliases. Another way to think about this is to say that child scopes inherit their items from their parents. So here's the global scope, in which I've created a variable named var and set it equal to 1. I then run a script, and inside that script is a function. Inside the function, I write the contents of var. Now PowerShell needs to find what's in var, so it first looks in the function to see if var exists. It doesn't exist there. So the shell goes to the function's parent, which is the script. It doesn't find it there either. So it goes up one last level to the shell where it finds the variable. That variable is read, and that is what the function is really accessing. The danger with scoping is that you can't assume a variable has a default value of some kind. If you access a variable before you explicitly assign it a value, PowerShell will search up the scope tree, and it may find that variable defined in a parent scope. That can create some significant logic errors in your script, take a long time to debug, and even behave differently on different computers or at different times, depending on how the parent scopes are configured at that time. So, try to never use a variable until you've explicitly assigned it a value within the current scope. The rules for writing are a bit different. Normally, a child scope can make changes to items from a parent scope. You can't. If you try, you simply wind up creating a new item of the same name in the current scope, effectively losing access to the parent scope item. For example, normally the shell defines the alias GCI as a shortcut to get child item. You could write a script which defines GCI as a shortcut to get content, let's say. Within your script, calls to GCI would really be using get content, but you would not have changed the GCI alias in the shell. This can obviously create a lot of confusion if you're not careful. Here's a more complicated example. Again, I have the global scope in which I set var equal to 1. I run a script. Inside the script, I access var. The variable doesn't exist in the script, so the shell goes to the global scope and finds it. This results in 1 being displayed. Then the script sets var equal to 2. This creates a new variable var inside the script scope. Now if the script tries to access var, it finds it in the script scope and uses that local variable, resulting in the display of 2. Now it is possible to explicitly change the values of variables in other scopes. A child can write to its parent scopes but never to its own children or to siblings. This is a very poor practice, though, because when your script runs at different times or on different computers, you can't predict the outcome of modifying parent scopes. However, I want you to know how to do it so that you're aware of the technique and of the danger it presents.
One way is to use a special naming syntax. Dollar sign global colon will change an item in the global scope, while dollar sign script colon will change the next script scope parent. You can also use the various set commandlets, which I find to be easier, such as set variable and set alias. These all have a scope parameter, which lets you specify the scope you want to change. Read the full help on these commandlets for information on how to specify a particular scope. So for this example, I'm going to start with a very short script. In fact, I'll use get content to display it for you. It just multiplies the value of var by itself, placing the result in the pipeline, so that out default receives it and displays it in the console. Simple enough. So I'll start by displaying a directory of PowerShell's variable drive to prove var doesn't exist. Now I'll run the script. Interesting result, right? Now in the shell, let's set var equal to 10, and I'll run the script one more time. What do you make of that? See, variables in PowerShell don't have a default value. What happened is that the script attempted to access a variable called var. The variable didn't exist within the script scope, so PowerShell went up one level, coming to the global scope of the shell itself. The second time, it found a variable var with a value of 10, so it used that within the script. Scope is a really easy way to get yourself in deep trouble really fast. So here are some best practices to stay out of trouble. First, never access out of scope items with variables or anything else unless you can avoid it. In other words, always assign a variable a specific value in the current scope before you use it. That'll prevent PowerShell from wandering up the scope tree and grabbing some value that you might not have been expecting. Never modify out of scope aliases or PS drives. If you're changing something outside of the current scope, you don't know what else you might have an impact on, so avoid doing it. And never modify the global scope in any way from any child scope, because the global scope is a permanent global scope. You start modifying it, you don't know what other processes are relying on the global scope, and you don't know what you might be breaking or at least bending severely. 